All right, higher education in focus big time after the Supreme Court's decision on affirmative action last month. The discussion around fair admissions, far from over, though. A federal probe launched into Harvard's admission preference for so-called legacy admissions. At the same time, more and more schools announcing they are ending the practice altogether. We're going to talk about it now with Biddy Martin, former president of Amherst College, who dropped legacy admissions during her tenure there, and Sarah Harberson, CEO and founder of Application Nation and former associate dean of admissions at UPenn. Welcome to both of you, ladies. Biddy, let me start with you. Why did you cease uh, legacy preferences uh, for the uh, children of alumni, and what has the effect been? It's a great question. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. We did it as the next step in a series of steps Amherst had taken to try and level the playing field and diversify the student body socioeconomically and racially. Uh, and uh, how it's gone, um, there's only been one class admitted uh, since we did away with legacy preference. And the percentage of legacy students admitted went from about 11% down to 6% over the course of that year. It's, with just one year of data, it's really hard to say what the effect will be long term. But as we knew, you see that there are legacy students who are highly qualified who will continue to enter uh, elite private institutions. We're going to get to that question mm -hmm. because I think it's sort of, there's a little bit of chicken and egg here, I, I guess, in, in this whole area. But, Biddy, let me, as you debate this, I know you've stepped uh, aside as president, so you may not know this. I'm wondering how much, as you debated doing this, uh, the idea that, well, now alumni aren't going to contribute the way they used to. How big an mm -hmm. issue was that as you debated whether to end legacy admissions or not? It's a really important issue, and it's not just whether alumni would continue to give. I, I think, you know, alumni bodies are one of the few remaining intergenerational communities in the country. It's important for young people and for people of every generation that we continue to build intergenerational community. And what alumni do for colleges and universities is not just give money, but actually support in a whole host of other ways. Um, so, yes, we did worry about it. We looked at data. Everything we did was heavily data-driven. Uh, Amherst has an extraordinary dean of admission and financial aid mm -hmm. from MIT. Um, <laughs> but in the end, we realized that it was um, what right. Opportunity Insights has now shown it was, and that is mm -hmm. uh, a problem in driving disproportionate numbers of the, more, the very wealthy uh, into elite colleges. Sarah, I, I'm, I'm curious if you have an applicant to a college that is a legacy student, but also checks all the other boxes that that college would want to have in a prospective student. Are you dinged if you're a legacy or are you just not added, uh, given any extra consideration? In the current state in college admissions at most of the selective colleges in the country that still value legacy, that legacy student is going to be significantly, has a much higher chance of getting admitted. But all students aren't equal, so it's very difficult to compare a really strong legacy applicant to a really strong non-legacy applicant. And the variances and the nuance is so subtle when you're in that admissions committee room.